What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are gonna talk about Nissan and basically, should you buy a new Nissan? So at this point, I've now had this 2022 Pathfinder Platinum for two whole weeks, nearly drove it 2,000 miles. We drove it all the way up to Michigan and back. So needless to say, I spent a lot of time in the all new generation Nissan Pathfinder. On top of that, to talk about other vehicles, we had the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X for a week, put a whole tank of gas in that, and really got a lot of seat time in that. I've owned two Nissan 370Zs in the past, and I'm currently over four years of ownership with my Nissan GTR. So with that said, we're gonna talk about Nissan as a whole, do kind of my ending review of what it's been like having this Pathfinder and everything about it. Cause I really feel like, to be quite honest, I think Nissan is killing it with these new generation vehicles, really offering so much for a great price. So let's hop in this Pathfinder, talk a little bit more about how Nissan is doing with their whole new generation of vehicles because I'm also planning to buy the brand new 2023 Nissan Z and I feel like some of the things I'm noticing in this as well as that Frontier, I bet the Z is gonna have it and it's getting me even more excited about the Z. So I think Nissan is doing some awesome things with their new cars. So then first thing to talk about while we're in the Pathfinder, I think the build quality and ride quality has impressed me. I'm going like 15 miles an hour off road. <laughs> hitting some bumps in sport mode. And this Pathfinder has been absolutely rock solid. It has really impressed me with just how good it feels. Hitting all these bumps, big bumps, the suspension does everything you need. And then when you get back on the road, It is a nice vehicle to be in. So obviously I spent a lot of time in this, racking up a ton of miles on it. And I think the build quality and ride quality stood out the most to where I wasn't expecting it to feel so solid. I've driven a lot of the BMWs. We drive so many of them, we film a lot of them. And this has that same type of ride quality to where there's no rattles, no loose ends. It just feels like a heavy tank. Not to say it weighs a lot, it just feels like it can kind of just plow through the road and you're in comfort. And I know there's some other SUVs out there that are also three rows. That might be, you know, five to 10 grand cheaper depending on options, but they're gonna have a little bit of a tinny feel. And you can tell they're a little bit on the budget friendly side because they aren't the same with the solid feeling. So this has been just a really nice car to have. And I like how racking up the miles on the highway, it never felt annoying to drive. It always just felt really comfortable and smooth. And it made an 11 hour road trip not feel like anything. It really went by quickly, 11 hours up, week later, 11 hours back. And it really didn't tire us out at all. The comfort is great, the amenities are great. And I think Nissan is really just stepping it up to give you something that can kind of do it all. This thing's about $51,000, fully loaded top of the line Pathfinder. And it always felt like a top of the line vehicle, just no cut corners or anything. We get a nine speed transmission, you know, no CVT or anything like that. Very smooth feeling, good shifting and everything. And then the engine, plenty of power, good efficiency, long range. What more can you ask for? And I feel like Nissan as a whole, I think they have just totally turned up the dial to really start producing some top-notch cars. Previous generation Nissans were okay. I wouldn't say they were anything crazy amazing, but now after being in a few of their new generation products, I am really excited because when the new Z came out, Nissan had kind of unveiled saying that they were gonna be renovating their entire lineup, making everything all new in the next five years or something like that. And after driving this new Pathfinder, I'm really looking forward to what they're gonna do with their entire product line. I know we've seen a lot of the new designs, the, the new Rogue is all new, uh, the Frontier, and then a few others so far, but I'm gonna be really impressed with the rest of the lineup, I'm sure. This vehicle really, really impressed me. I was expecting it to just be a nice, normal SUV. And after putting so many miles on the Pathfinder, it really just left me with a great impression of the vehicle. And then even if we look back a few months ago when we had the new Nissan Frontier Pro 4X, so in that segment, the Toyota Tacoma has been the king forever, that is a fact. My brother, you know, we had one back in 2007, owned that for nine years. And then 2017, my brother bought another brand new one and he still owns that. So the Tacoma, we have been in for so long and we really love that truck. And the Frontier before the new generation, it was just a basic truck, nothing too crazy amazing. And then when we checked out the all new one, comparing it with the Tacoma, we found that it was a complete competitor there were some great things with both trucks. You know, each truck had a lot to offer. The Frontier was better on road, you know, better engine and transmission layout, smoother on road capabilities, better technology. The Tacoma had a few more off road features, so they kind of 
balanced out to each offer a different buy or something different. So if you really want the hardcore off-roading, you know, you might need to do a few more mods to the Frontier. If you're really using it as a daily, the Frontier is a lot smoother and more efficient than the Tacoma, so that's a better option. So it was really cool to see that the Frontier stood out to be a complete competitor and even better in some regards compared to the Tacoma. This, I'm sure its main competitor is gonna be the Toyota Highlander. Haven't really driven it too much in the last year. I think I filmed the 2020 model or a 21 model year, and it was really nice, of course. However, it was kind of like a minivan. It felt a little bit more like that. I don't think it can tow quite as much as this. This thing can do 6,000 pounds. And I'm sure there's some great things about it. Again, I haven't really been in it in quite a while, but this really did stand out with a nicer interior, I think. I think the exterior is more bold, and you know this has a lot going on for it. And then even when we look at these Zs and everything like that, you know, I owned two of the 370Zs, amazing sports cars. I really enjoyed everything about them. And then I just sold my Toyota Supra in order to buy the 2023Z. And I like in the Supra how there is that refinement. It's built by BMW, so you get that European refinement. And last year when I made a kind of an update video on the Z, I said that I didn't think the new Z will have that same refinement. But after experiencing the new Pathfinder and the new Frontier, I'm actually really, really looking forward to even more now with the new Z, because I bet it's gonna feel a lot nicer than I expected. I think it's gonna have a more solid feeling that my Supra had, but come in at $10,000 less, and right out of the gate come with a manual transmission instead of waiting two years to unveil that Toyota. But I think the new Z is now gonna be even better than I'm expecting, because I think it's gonna have that solid feeling and the technology in this, I really like. The navigation screen and everything worked really well. The heads up display, the navigation in here, the technology worked really well and I liked what this car had to offer. So I think the Z is gonna have a lot of that as well and just make that not only an amazingly fun sports car, you know, 400 horsepower, manual transmission, big brakes, all that good stuff that you're gonna want in a sports car, but also have the refinement levels that make it a really good daily and just make it feel like a really solid car. And even when I look back at my 370Zs, again, love those cars. You could tell there was kind of a cheap feeling to just the ride. Being a sports car, you know, they're kind of stripped down. You know, that's kind of what that car is. And especially in that era from 2009, you know, that car started. So it's a decade old car. That's kind of how they were. So that car didn't have the same levels of refinements when I got into the Supra. But now I think the new Z is going to have those refinements. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. So then when you look at Nissan as a whole, you know, should you buy a new Nissan? I'm blown away. I really am. Put them on your list. I've driven so many of the European cars lately, and to be in a Nissan, you know, normal Japanese vehicle, pretty normal brand in our world, it's nice to be in something like this. 51 grand, top of the line, pretty similar sizing to like a BMW X7, and yet it is significantly cheaper. Still just as capable. You might not get all the same luxuries, of course, being it's not you know, $90,000, but I don't know, it just, it just really impressed me. Some of my downfalls with this, I really only have one small complaint with this, and I'm not sure how it translates to the other Nissan cars, but the basically the radar cruise control, smart, intelligent, uh, lane keeping, steering intervention, radar cruise control works great. The distance pacing, all that, fantastic. The lane keeping and steering intervention, I wasn't the biggest fan of. On the more straight roads, it does a good job, but I noticed when it was on, if there was any type of turns in the road, the car kind of goes back and forth lane to lane, so maybe it's just not quite designed to somewhat be an autonomous car, but it kind of drifts a little bit to where the lane keeping would actually activate while letting it drive itself. And the steering wheel, it didn't seem to be super sensitive to feel my hands on the wheel. A lot of times if I was driving like this or something on a more straight road, it would keep coming up telling me to put my hands on the wheel. So if Nissan can just fine tune that a little bit, make it stay in its lane a little bit better without drifting and feel your hands a little bit better to where it doesn't keep telling you to put them on the wheel, then absolutely perfect rock solid. So I noticed any type of roads where there were slight turns in it on the highway, I just turned that system off and just did the radar cruise control because it got a little annoying. But that's really my only complaint with it, you know, and that's kind of a minor complaint to be honest. It's just a little bit of a fine tuning issue. They can just tune it a little bit and I think it'd be good to go. But like I said, ride quality and comfort, I'm really impressed with the whole package you get. And for the price, you know, 51 grand, still a pretty good chunk for a family SUV. But when you look at other vehicles out there, that's not too outlandish for today's market for a full-size vehicle that has real leather, four-wheel drive, 
an actual transmission, towing capacity, and all this kind of tech. So pretty well priced for what you get for sure. And when you look at competitors that are the same layout, that don't have the same you know, six cylinder, the third row capabilities with three wide all the way in the back, along with the towing, those cars are a little bit cheaper feeling and they're cheaper for a reason because they don't have all those amenities. So it's been an impressive car to check out. And when I look at the other Nissans I've been in, I'm really looking forward to the Z. Once the Nissan dealers have more information and can actually order it, I think this month, May, they are announcing the full pricing of the Z. I know it's gonna start around 40. I'm gonna be buying the fully loaded one. I want the performance package, of course, a manual transmission and uh, whatever tech package it gets. And then uh, hopefully by June or July, I should be able to take delivery. Not too sure just yet. Hopefully we get more information from the dealer levels. There's been a lot of delays, unfortunately, so I really don't know too much. But I think that's gonna be a rock solid car too. And I think throughout their entire range, as they continue to completely renovate each model, like go check them out. Like seriously, look into the newest model. If the Sentra has been kind of a cheap basic car for a long time, I'm sure the newest one is gonna really give a Corolla and an Elantra a run for their money and probably be a pretty solid vehicle at that affordable level. The Titan, you know, that's been a pretty sweet truck. I know it's been redesigned pretty soon. I haven't checked one out just yet. I'm sure that's gonna give a Tundra and an F-150 a run as well and be a pretty rock solid truck. So Nissan's impressing me and this Pathfinder really, really just got me so much more pumped for the Z because it was just a pleasant vehicle to road trip in. We had so much filled up in the back. There's so much space in here. And the fact that we could get 400 something miles on a tank and fill it up for 50 bucks at a quarter tank and up, uh, not that bad. We spent 200 bucks in gas and a little over 1500 miles which is not too bad for today's ridiculous prices and stuff like that. But I think Nissan is really coming back better than ever, making some really, really nice vehicles loaded out, or you can get more base models if you don't want to spend the money. And I think you can't really go wrong at this point. Also excited to see if an R36 GTR comes out. I have my own thoughts. I feel like a few months or maybe a year after the Z uh, actually hits dealers, I feel like an R36 will be unveiled. And I kind of hope it's going to be a twin turbo V6 with a hybrid system like the Acura NSX. I think that would be pretty awesome just because you'd get so much performance and so much technology. It might be a very expensive car, which means my GTR will just keep going up in value, which would be pretty cool. Um, so we'll see on the R36, of course, uh, Nissan hasn't really poked anything about that. But yeah, that is about it then for the Nissan Pathfinder along with Nissan in general. I'm impressed, really, really impressed, and I really enjoyed this. Uh, Nissan Pathfinder, if you're looking for a three-row family SUV, take a look at one of these. The Highlander and the Ford Explorer are probably really good competitors to this. Uh, Ford Explorer, not really a big fan of. I'm sure the Highlander is nice as well, but this really, really stands out. So check them out for sure. That is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed the Pathfinder content, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for plenty more content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. There we go, there we go, there we go.